broadcasting live from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, in the heart of the great American Southwest. It's Erskine Overnight. Now, here's Erskine. Robert Chapman is the publisher of the International Forecaster, the newsletter that examines world economic conditions and major events, provides a forecast of economic trends for intelligent financial planning and investing. More important than that, Mr. Chapman is a freedom fighter. Every issue of the international freedom, he is telling you how our freedoms are being eroded and what we can do to fight for freedom. He presents future headlines today and the worldview that you simply don't get elsewhere on any of the managed news services. He offers information so you can make informed financial and other decisions. The International Forecaster dot com. The put the in front of it, international forecaster dot com. Or you can call 877-479-8178. We'll give you that uh, during the program. We're talking about freedom. We're talking about how America is throwing away our freedom and our control of our own destiny. That's what it's coming down to today. How bad of troubles are we in and what can we do about it? Mr. Chapman, welcome to Erskine Overnight. Well, thank you. It's uh, very nice being back. Uh, I think it's been 15 years now that we've been on together. So, uh, uh, obviously, we're having a good time doing it. We are, and we're in more trouble now than ever. When you're talking about the Internet control by executive order, the Rockefeller bill, and our attempt to relinquish control of the IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, the U.N. wants to legislate content. Uh, they want the ability to have five years of stored emails and instant access for law enforcement. What are they trying to do, Mr. Chapman? We're fighting for freedom, and they're just trying to give it away. All of our sovereignty and everything America stood for. We built the Internet, and they want to give it away? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, that's right. And uh, and they also want to give uh, what I would call illegal access. Uh, presently, uh, I understand law enforcement's problems chasing down criminals, and uh, and I sympathize with them, but... Uh, when it comes to pers- uh, people's rights in America under the Constitution, uh, it should be uh, followed. And uh, I think that uh, them c- complaining that they have to wait 15 minutes or a day for an answer for, from uh, one of the uh, ISPs or, or whatever, um, I-, I think that's something they just have to work with. And, uh, and like it or not, uh, you know, it is private, and it's private for a reason. And that is because they didn't want government to control the Internet. Uh, the funding for the creation of the Internet came from the American taxpayer, government, if you may. And, um, and so it belongs to us. And to let uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the United Nations, who wants to control this, uh, to let them get their foot in the door, which is what the president is trying to do, uh, is a dastardly thing. I think it's as important an issue as gun, uh, gun people being able to have guns under the Second Amendment. Uh, this is a major, major thing that they're trying to do here. And, you know, uh, at the uh, World Economic, uh, Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland last week, uh, the chief research and strategy office of Microsoft, Craig Mundy, said, uh, the people who are going to use the Internet should have to get the equivalent of a driver's license to be able to use oh. it. Now, you know, China oh tried this, and they had to stop because they almost went into revolution. They didn't tell the world that, but I know that. And this is what's going to happen in America if they pull this stuff. And they're doing the same thing in England, and for years... You've had such starling, star, star, such, such interesting countries complain about this, such as Cuba, Zimbabwe, uh, <laughs> Venezuela, uh, Saudi Arabia, and, 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 bastards and of freedom, country. real bastards of freedom, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the reason <laughs> why is they want to be able to control what goes on in their country through the internet so that they can 
keep their people shut up. And, and this is a method by allowing the U.N. to take control, which they want, to shut everybody up. And if I say, well, I don't like the position of the president on the health uh, reform, uh, health care reform bill, uh, they can just say you can't be on the Internet anymore because you can't pretty criticize the president. You're too provocative. You can't say things like that. So there goes your free speech. One of the other big issues that you have uh, certainly talked about, and of all the people, you're one of the few who's uh, put the blame right square where some of it is, Goldman Sachs helping Greece mask their deficits with derivatives deals. Uh, Europe is in flames. You've got rioting going on in Greece. You've got rioting in France to the degree that they won't even allow it on the news. Uh, you've got major, major problems. The euro looks like it's splitting apart. Europe's in a real mess, aren't they, Mr. Chapman? It's nothing that I didn't predict. I started uh, <laughs> talking about this uh, back in uh, late, the, well, around 96, 97. And right. I said that the European Union was an unnatural bonding of people because it's entirely a tribal structure. Uh, the Eurozone uh, was a, a, a bailing wire uh, put together kind of unit where Greece and Italy in particular uh, were Mickey Mouse in their books to get in, 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 inside of the Eurozone because they wanted it for business. And Goldman Sachs, I talked about Goldman Sachs and what they were doing with the derivatives and all of that. And everybody in Europe knew it. But they looked the other way and went right ahead and did it. Now, seeing that we've known all of this for 10 years, if we were paying attention, the average person wasn't, the average businessman wasn't, the average politician wasn't. But the financial <laughs> people in Europe knew all about it. Now, why did they pick this time to make Greece into an issue, and I'll tell you why. Because a year or a year and a half or two down the line, there's going to be some big changes. What they're doing is establishing that sovereigns can go bankrupt. And the first one is Greece, and then we'll have Italy, and then we'll have Ireland, Portugal, Spain, and then we've already got Iceland, and then we'll have Austria, because they have all these loans out to Eastern Europe, and Eastern Europe is Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Hungary, Romania, and Poland. And they're all going to be on the edge along with the United Kingdom and guess who? The United States of America. And the now, a lot of the sovereign the loans that Greece had are held by the U.K., so the U.K. has got to be in really, really, really pitiful shape now, is Germany going to sit back and try to bail them out when Germany is one of the stronger nations right now? The people of Germany, I don't think, want to bail them out. Well, first of all, i got to get to the bottom line of what I was talking about. And that yes, is sir. what's going to happen is that they're going to have all of these countries together in trouble, all ready to go into bankruptcy, and they're going to have a big meeting like the Smithsonian meetings of the 1970s, and then the Plaza Accord in 85 and the Louvre Accord in 87. And what they're going to do, and I will tell you after the break. No, no, okay. We'll be right back with Robert Chapman.